Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the uh, human resource management super important question from exam point of view. Let's have a look at that, what all it consists of and you can download this uh, document, the link is in the description box and before starting make sure the like button, subscribe to my channel if you find this uh, content helpful and let's get started. So in the module 1 what we have is the introduction and human resource planning. Okay, In introduction mainly we need to define what is HRM which is human resource planning management and then we have the objective functions and policies. Okay, so so what is HRM? It is Human Resource Management. It uh, consists of the dimensions in which we'll be organizing and uh, managing the human resources, like oh, how many people are required for which task, okay, to achieve some goals. Okay, and the evolution consists of firstly it was the beginning uh, where you have the capitalist, and then we have the technical legalistic, and uh, then we have professional uh, legalistic, and then we have philosophical. Okay, these are the four things, and these are the periods also given here. Okay, this is what you have to write, and each of these um, periods, what all has happened in emphasis, it is. Given. okay you can go through it and write uh, from there next we have what are the function of hrm two functions are there managerial functions operative functions managerial functions include planning and organizing and in operation function we include like uh, to generally overall manage what all is happening like operations uh, which are happening in the functions those things will be managing okay that is called as operative functions Next we have what is HRM policies. Policy is not, nothing but a plan or action. Okay, a plan of action which will be forming to uh, achieve something. Okay, that is only called as um, policy. And in HRM policy means to manage the human resources. We will be making a policy that is called as policies of HRM. And few policies, personal policies are like policy of hiring people, terms and condition, uh, medical assistance, housing, transport uniform, training development regarding industrial uh, relations. And to formulate them, we have the past practices, prevailing practice to philosophies of the middle and lower level management knowledge and experience gained okay so these are the basic things which we will be considering before making any policy next we have what is hrm planning human resource planning which is hrp okay that is uh, nothing but how many people are necessary to carry out the sn activities that thing is called as human resource planning then we have what are the benefits so benefits are very simple upper management has a, a better view management can anticipate more time is provided and better opportunities exist better planning of assignments and develop managers and major and successful demands it checks the corporate plans facilitates the control so basic all what all you have the um, benefits of planning right you can write in your own words nothing much uh, to worry about Next, we have explained the HRP process. In the process, we have the overall organization, business environment, forecasting manpower needs, accessing manpower supply, matching manpower demand and supply factors. Okay, this is the process which is happening in the uh, HRP. And this is the thing which you have to draw. You'll be starting with the business environment and then you will have the organization goals uh, divided into manpower, manpower forecast and manpower supply. Then we have the programming and the control manipulation. And here we have the surplus manpower or the shortage of manpower based on that will be um, making the decisions okay so what is manpower supply forecasting personal and demand analysis provides the managers with the means of estimating the number and the kind of employees that will be required okay so manpower supply forecasting means how many people are required to carry out a specific task that is called as manpower uh, supply forecasting Next, we have uh, write a short note on the job analysis information. Job analysis means uh, for a particular job, what all is needed. Job description, which is job oriented and job specification, who is going to perform the task about that employee. Okay, so few points are given here. You can go through it and write in your own words. Okay. Next, we have in the module 2 recruitment and selection. Very simple, you need to know what is recruitment. Recruitment basically means before selection, you will be doing some stuff to um, choose who people are eligible. That is called as recruitment. Selection means from those selected people, you are selecting some people for the job. That is called as selection. Okay. So, in recruitment, we have the following process. You have to remember first the planning will be done. Then, if the job vacancies are there, then you will be doing the recruitment planning, strategy development, applicant population, and searching for the activation, and then evaluation and control. Okay. Then, we'll be selecting one employee this is the uh, thing you have to make and you have to describe each of these steps which is present here what are the advantages of internal and external recruitment internal uh, recruitment is less costly here it is more costly but uh, here we will have the benefits of new talents and uh, experiences okay internal means from where you are in the uh, locality there only are recruiting external means you are recruiting it from some other sources okay that was about the internal and external recruitment then we have the selection what is the difference between recruitment and selection recruitment is the first step what happens selection is after that uh, the person gets selected okay that is only the difference and the for more information go through here for the selection process also very simple application screening selection test interview reference selection decision 
physical examination, job offer, employment, contract evaluation. If you know these steps, what are its meaning? Just you have to uh, write in the answer script that only. Next, we have barriers in selection process. Barriers are uh, many. The examples are percep uh, perception, fairness, validity. Reliability, pressure, and um, these were some of the uh, barriers to the uh, selection process because when there is a perception uh, inability, you will not be able to perceive the uh, person how they are actually, and the right candidate, uh, right candidates could be missed. And fairness means some people will be uh, biasing to the other uh, candidates. That is uh, discrimination. Validity means you will not be able to find out the candidate's true potential, and because of that, you will not be able to get the uh, actual candidate. And reliability, the reliable method might not be present. And pressure means due to some Someone's pressure will be selecting the persons who are not even eligible. So those were the barriers to the uh, selection. And then we have the steps involved in induction. Induction means what? When a new employee arrives, you will be making that employee familiar to the environment, what are job uh, things and all, who all are working and all those things. This is a five-step process. It is given here. You can go through it. And after that, we have the module three in which we have the training and development and performance appraisal. Training and development is basically you will be training the employees to perform your particular uh, job, which they are supposed to be performed. So the employees ability to, through learning usually is changing by the employee's attitude or increasing. So training means if a person is not able to perform some task, we will be giving him some training so that the person is able to perform the task uh, with more efficiency and with more skills. That is what is called training and development. What is the basic purpose of training? Increase productivity, improve quality, help a company, fulfill its future needs, organizational climate improve, improve health and safety, obsolescence uh, prevention, which is the outdated outdated should not happen. So the uh, people who are working, they must be continuously trained and personal growth. For the personal growth also, the training is given. Explain the steps in training programs. Discovering or identifying the training needs, getting ready for the job, preparation of the learner, presentation of operations, performance, and then follow up with evaluation. Basic common senses: you'll be starting with the identification of the job, then you'll be doing the presentation of the learner, then you will be trying to find out what is more better. Okay, that is only what is the steps in the training program. What are the principles in the training evaluation? These are the five principles which you need to know. They, are, they are just have to do basically with the. Um, Evaluation. So evaluation must be continuous, specific, means and focus. Don't try to memorize them. Just know what is happening, common in between, and uh, just keep them in mind. Okay. What is performance appraisal and its objectives? What is performance appraisal? Appraisal means you will be systematically evaluating what is the uh, person's performance. Okay. That is only what is called the appraisal. And the objectives of the appraisal, use of uh, performance appraisal, performance of uh, purpose of appraisal to affect the promotions, confirm the services, and access the training development needs. Decide upon when to uh, pay raise when regular pay scales have not been fixed. When you have to give to the uh, appraisal to whom, which person, all those key factors. Okay, it depends on many factors, and uh, based on that factors, the appraisals will be given. Moving on, we have what are the steps in the performance appraisal? So objective definition, job expectation. Uh, establishment, design appraisal program, and appraisal performance. After the performance is done, uh, the interviews will be taken, archive the data, performance data, uh, use of appraisal data. Based on the previous appraisals, you will be performing a new appraisal. Okay. Moving on to the module 4, we have counseling and human uh, resource accounting. Counseling means both helping someone to uh, solve the problem. Okay, so why is it needed to solve the problem which affects the uh, employees? So if the employee is not working properly, it will indirect affect the organization as well. That is the need for the counseling. That uh, the objectives of counseling are given here. Types of counseling are two: directive and non-directive. Okay, also a uh, cooperative and uh, marital and family counseling. Process of communication: messages encoded and sent to the receiver. Receiver decodes it and again sends back to the sender. And these are the process of the seven steps. The same steps are given. What are the functions of the communication? Information to give any instruction or to have the influence or the persuasion of function, integrative function. So these were the different uh, functions of the communication. Then we have the advantage of HRA. HRA is human record uh, accounting. Okay. So in human record accounting, uh, information of manpower planning, how many people are required, information about the personal policy, what policy has to be made for the persons, utilization of resources, proper placements, increase the morale and motivation, designing training and valuable information. Okay. And the limitations also given here go through it. Next, we have what are the various methods of accounting. So the, there are different methods of accounting: historical cost, replacement, opportunity, standard. This is based on the cost based. Then we have monetary value based, and then we have non-monetary value based as well. Okay. So just a single single line for this. Like for example, historical uh, cost approach. What does that mean? It means that uh, it is on the basis of the actual cost incurred on the human resources. Based on that, the cost is set. Replacement cost: how much it is, how much it causes to replace, like that. Okay. So the single single sentence I have put here, you can go through it. And 
coming to the module 5 in the module 5 we have some of the uh, legal things like the laws and all so indian trade union act the first super important question what is the indian trade union act in indian trade union act there was the before the 1850 and 1870 there were the laws which had been very harsh on the people the work was more and the pay was less so that's why indian trade union act was introduced okay so more information is given here you can read that one and when that was introduced, it became uh, it became very much uh, favorable in the uh, in terms of the uh, for the labors. Uh, it became more beneficial, and that was uh, just continued. What is Standing Orders Act? Standing Orders Act means in uh, industrial employment. Okay, if uh, any person is uh, having issue with another person, or the company is having issue with another company, there will be some uh, acts going on that will be acting as an authority between those two and solving the problem okay and the examples are given here based on the case studies that you can go through it and what are the matters to be provided in the standing order act is classification of workmen so as to uh, injustice should not happen based uh, just because uh, for that uh, these things will be provided okay then we have indian factories act in indian factories act is to regulate the conditions of work Manufacturing establishment coming with the definition of the term factory. What all a factory should consist of, what all they should provide for the users, everything will be uh, coming in the Indian Factories Act. Okay. Then we have the apply uh, plans of the application of the act. This is also there. Uh, you can go through it. Like uh, when are the uh, acts applied, which states it was applied, and in which year it was applied. Th those are the key points. Next, we have explained the Indian Industrial Disputes Act. If there is in, uh, dispute between two people, what has to be done? Two methods are there for the solving of the disputes. Those are uh, written here. Go through it. And then we have explained two types of arbitration. Arbitration also is the same thing. It is a procedure which neutral third party. There is a third party who will be bargaining uh, the situation, listens to both the parties and decides on their behalf. There are two types of uh, arbitration. The two types of arbitration are voluntary arbitration and compulsory arbitration. Voluntary means the persons, uh, the two um, fighting parties will be inviting another uh, party to make a decision between them. That voluntarily they are doing, that is called as voluntary arbitration. Next, we have compulsory arbitration in which the government will be the one who will be deciding the uh, final decision for the both of the parties. Okay. Next, we have write a short note on Board of Conciliation. Con uh, conciliation means what? It is a process by which the representative of the workers and employees are brought together before a third party with a view to persuading them to arrive at an agreement by mutual discussion. If there is two arguments, they will be brought together and discussion will be then so that they can arrive at a single conclusion. Okay. So other duties are also given here. Go through it. Next, we have adju. <coughs> Adjudication. adjudication adjudication is the process of rapid resolution of the disputes about payment for the construction work once the uh, work is done they have to get paid those labors who have done it right so that uh, payment work is uh, given here what all has to be done okay and there are three types of industrial disputes uh, for the three tire machinery labor court industrial uh, tribunal and national tribunal labor court is nothing but the court for uh, handling the labor cases and industrial and national tribunal means in uh, both of these will be having the um, rules and regulations so which can be followed in the industries as well as in the national industries which are uh, spread worldwide okay so that's all uh, make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one